1962, Donald Westlake, under the pen name Richard Stark, wrote The Hunter. The Hunter has often been described as one of the best pulp fictions or noir fictions. And some people have described the character Parker as a sociopath or a psychopath. I believe that's uh, incorrect. The real way to understand this novel, which was originally intended to be a standalone book, not a series, is to understand it in the sense of Ayn Rand's theory of objectivism and individualism. Ayn Rand's theory was most fully articulated in her 1957 book, Atlas Shrugged, which is a novel. And that book did a lot to move forward the theory of individualism and objectivism. It is almost a certainty that someone like Donald Westlake would be aware of this book, a New Yorker who uh, Ayn Rand was as well, and probably would have read it. My argument is that Richard Stark's The Hunter is actually one of the best articulations of the theory of individualism and objectivism and is in fact an extension of Ayn Rand's theory. I'm going to give three examples in this book. In this sentence here, we read, if Chester had a failing, it was that he believed people were what they thought they were. That's a sentence that's really worth thinking about and pausing over, but the essence of the thought here is that those who take their identity of organizations as opposed to being individuals, or those who believe that people are the organizations they belong to. Either way, they are deceived. And this writing here, this sentence itself, is just brilliant. I looked up quotes by Donald Westlake, and other people have focused on this sentence. It's worth thinking about. Here we have the syndicate or organization, today we would call it the mob, guy named Mal Resnick, who is an equal part of this book as much as Parker is. And he's with a prostitute, and he's trying to impress her. And the reader just cringes at how sappy and deluded this guy Mal Resnick is. He grinned, yeah, I'm what you might call administrative. And he found himself telling her all about his job, the responsibility it entailed, the problems he faced, the kinds of guys he had working for him. You can see how pathetic the organization man is, the administrative man, as opposed to the individual. To make the distinction with Parker, Parker being the exemplary individual. Here he's confronting the head of the organization who tells him, in 24 hours you'll be dead. No lone man can buck the organization. I'll be seeing you, Parker said. Again, the individual versus the organization. And though Parker is a criminal. I argue that this book is ultimately romanticism. And if you compare romanticism versus realism, Ayn Rand characterized her literature as a romanticism. Um, she compared herself to, for instance, um, the writing of Les Miserables and Basically, her goal was to make a theme to show the perfect man, the perfect person, women as well. And she saw the novel as a means to show what people should aspire to. 
I believe that Westlake, despite the fact that he has said in interviews that he is a realist and not a romanticist, he actually is a romanticist. And here you can see Parker is saying, and this time he'd know to watch her a little closer and not to fall in love. So you see, Parker's downfall was when he gave up his individuality to another person and he learned his lesson. It led to betrayal. So ultimately, what Richard Stark, aka Donald Westlake, is saying is that the value of a person is the individual nature within them and as soon as they give that up whether to another person or to an organization they are lesser and lost and actually quite worthless so there you have it Richard Stark also known as Donald Westlake wrote the ultimate book on objectivism and individualism the hunter